Hi everyone, uh, my name is Min. I'm a product manager at uh, Smart Technologies. Uh, so thanks for joining us again. Uh, today I'm very excited to share with you uh, some exciting new features in Smart Learning Suite Online. Uh, today we're actually giving you a sneak peek at, at some of the new features that we'll be releasing uh, in the next couple of weeks. So this is not quite on Smart Learning Suite Online yet, uh, but uh, please uh, stay tuned to our uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter channels uh, for updates. Um, as well as uh, check back often on Smart Learning Suite Online. That these changes should be up uh, soon. So let's get to it. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is um, an update on how Smart Learning Suite Online uh, handles um, the delivery of the teacher's lesson to student devices. Uh, and we have some exciting changes here. So as you probably know today, uh, with Smart Learning Suite Online, it's really nice to use with student devices because you can have students connect uh, to your lesson uh, and give them a copy of your lesson. Uh, so that they can do activities and, uh, and see what you're doing. So what I have on my screen here uh, is a side-by-side -side view. On the left-hand side here, I have the teacher view of Smart Learning Suite Online. And on the right-hand side, I have the students. So previously, uh, one of the limitations with Smart Learning Suite Online is uh, you might have a lesson um, that you share with students, and they can see the lesson and the contents of the lesson. Um, but if you were to uh, say annotate uh, on the lesson uh, or take notes, the students don't see those changes uh, on their device. But as you can obviously see uh, uh, in this preview here, uh, on the student side, students are actually seeing those changes live. So now you can actually uh, use annotations to point at things and students will be able to see that, uh, that reference uh, live on their device. Uh, and uh, any, as long as uh, you know, they're connected to the lesson, and also if you take any notes in the lesson, students will be able to see those notes as well. Uh, the other big change that we made uh, to the delivery model uh, is we're actually giving teachers more explicit control about how they uh, deliver their content, the, the, the content of the lesson to students. So by default, um, you can see on the student side, they're actually view only on the content, right? So a lot of times in your lesson, you might have a page that's, you know, that's just like this one here, uh, where it's just information that you want to deliver students, and there isn't really something that you necessarily need them to do. Uh, so in this experience, you can see that uh, the students are just viewing the content, uh, and they're not, and they don't have any of the tools on the sidebar here to then move things around or mess up that content. Um, but of course, uh, one of the powerful things in Smart Learning Suite Online is that, of course, you could import uh, a page such as this, where you've designed it as an activity for the students to do. Um, so in this case. Uh, what teachers can do is actually you can explicitly turn this page into an activity for your students to do on their device. Um, so I'll show you how you can do that here. Um, so as you know, uh, in the top left-hand corner, we have our class panel, which shows you a list of connected students. Uh, and on the right-hand side, now you'll notice this new user interface uh, that tells you uh, what the students are seeing on their device. So the page right now is only view, is view only for students. Um, but you have the option to now make this page into an independent handout activity. So I can do that here. And what you see on the student side is that their screen changed into this, uh, this screen that's uh, reminiscent of a lab activity, right? Because it looks like the start screen of a lab activity with this big start button. So as soon as they just click start, and now they have that activity al along with uh, all the tools on the, uh, on the toolbar here for them to then complete this activity. So in this example here, uh, the students would just uh, drag and drop the chocolates into the correct location and then uh, use ink to annotate and complete the, the activity. Um, on the teacher side, of course, you have the activity as well. So you can use this to model the activity to students at the front of the board. Um, in the future, um, and just a quick note about uh, some of the things we're planning, uh, we do intend on this being a dashboard for teachers, so you'll be able to view and monitor student progress as well. Um, so look for that update sometime in the fall. Uh, that's, uh, this is kind of the starting point for kind of unifying a lot of the uh, workflows and uh, user interface around how teachers handle activities in Smart Learning Suite Online. Um, so the next thing I want to talk about is a, a new and a different type of activity uh, that you can facilitate in lessons. Um, if you're keen, when I was demoing the uh, individual handout activities, you might have noticed a different option underneath here. And this is to make this page into a collaborative workspace activity. Um, so just like in the previous example, where teachers uh, want students to, perhaps they want, sometimes we want students to uh, complete an activity individually, 
But there are other times where, you know, for um, an activity that's more involved or you want students to work uh, together to solve the problem, uh, you can actually group students uh, that are connected to your class and then get them connected to a shared space. Um, so uh, I have this page here where uh, it's a little bit higher level uh, activity and it's asking students to work together to find images of fractions in everyday life, uh, identify the fractions and explain uh, what is the whole and what are the parts. So of course you can do this uh, individually, but uh, because it is more involved, I'm going to make this into a collaborative workspace activity. So as a teacher, when I click on this option, uh, what you'll see is um, an interface that comes up that gives teachers the option to then create uh, teams that you can then break the students into. And this number here, uh, this interface, uh, will be very familiar to you if you like monster quiz, because uh, it's essentially just a monster quiz uh, interface. So I'm gonna pick two teams here, and you can see just like monster quiz, it groups the students randomly to start. Um, but of course, you have the ability to then decide to uh, rearrange the, the groups. So actually for this activity, I think I'm just gonna have everybody in the same uh, workspace uh, to do this together, since we only have students, three students. So once I click Start Workspace, a couple of things to note here. On the left-hand side, for the teachers, uh, you see a dashboard. Um, since I only have one team, you see the team as well as who's in the team. When you have multiple teams, they will get tiled on the screen. You can see them there. On the right-hand side, for the student, uh, you actually see this activity that I just uh, um, handed out. Uh, and you can see that this is the Team 2's workspace. Uh, and I do actually have a couple of collaborators with me in the room here, and they're busy, um, you know, finding out content. Oh, there we go. So somebody's uh, discovered, uh, found a pizza, and is now uh, breaking that pizza up into little pieces and writing out the fractions. Good work. Of course, uh, I can do the same. Um, you know, I can draw in the space, uh, find my own pictures using this interface. So if I just type in a word here, and you can see you get the results here, and all you do is just drag that image uh, into the space, and there is your image. So what's really powerful about this is this is a, um, now the students have taken that page that you've had in your lesson, and it, we have converted into a shared space. Now everybody can contribute content in. So there are endless things that you can, you can think of uh, how you can leverage this uh, to really support student collaboration um, uh, in your lesson. So again, uh, depending on what you, uh, what you need to do um, or what you would want the students to do, you can either have them work individually to complete an activity you designed in the lesson or collaboratively now with this new workspace activity. All right, um, so the next thing I wanna talk about is the creation experience in Smart Learning Suite Online. Uh, I really enjoy seeing everybody's um, fantastic lab activities that you created uh, through our uh, SLSO challenges. Um, and now you can, even do, uh, you can do even more with Smart Learning Suite Online. So previously you were limited to only uh, being able to create a single activity, uh, but now when you click on this plus button, uh, you're given uh, a full screen experience and three very simple choices of whether starting from a file that you have, whether it's notebook, PDF, or PowerPoint, uh, or you can create something from scratch, uh, like a lab activity or an assessment. I'm actually going to start by, uh, with the lab activity. So you're probably familiar with this. It brings up the wizard, uh, and then I would just, uh, just to create a, a very quick, uh, maybe just, uh, Amy, if you can add some text in there. Uh, yeah, this doesn't need to be a long activity. And I'm just going to click next. Uh, and pick a theme and finish that activity. So all of this you're probably familiar with, nothing has changed there, uh, but now you can see it's actually adding the activity to a lesson. And once it's done that, it brings you to this new user interface. Um, so on the left hand side here, you see what we call the, the page story. So like you're familiar with in Smart Notebook. And on the right hand side here, you can edit that activity or preview it. Uh, and you can actually change the names of the activity. I know a lot of you have been waiting for that for a long time. So now you can actually make the activities recognizable or easily to, uh, easy to remember for both you and your students. Um, but the key change here is that um, you're not only able to create just the single activity, you can add on to it. So if you wanted to build a student pace lesson with a collection of activities, uh, you can actually continue to add a different activity that supports the same theme. 
So let's say I want to add on a super sort activity uh, and then just type in my content. Maybe you want to sequence the activity in a way where it goes from you know, something that's a little bit easier to something that's more difficult. Uh, so you can do that. And then I'm just going to click next after I'm done. Pick the theme and click finish. And you can see that activity now shows up after that one. Uh, of course, you can reorder any of these activities. So maybe, um, let's, I'm just going to add another quick activity here. Let's say uh, I want to do a shout it out activity, and this one's really, really quick to add. Uh, but I wanted the students to, to do a discussion first before they do the, uh, the review activities. I can just uh, click, actually, I need to use the mouse for this. Okay, thank you. Uh, so you can move and drag the activities and rearrange them uh, depending on how you want the students to go through the activities themselves. Um, so, so this is kind of the experience for creating from scratch. You can, of course, rename the full lesson, actually, so you're not limited to just naming, renaming the activity itself. Um, and then anything that you do in this interface, you can actually undo. So if you make a mistake, you can just very quickly undo that change uh, or redo that change. And everything saves automatically, so you don't have to worry about saving it. When you're done, you just click the home button and that takes you back into your lesson library and you can see that new activity you created. Uh, of course, you can start with a lesson that you already have. Uh, and the other nice thing is that now you can actually edit any activity uh, you've imported into Smart Learning 3 Online. So not just the ones that you create um, with this new feature, um, but also uh, past lessons that you've uploaded. So with that fractions lesson that uh, I was using before, all I have to do to edit it, just click on the pencil icon and that actually loads up um, all of the pages of the activity. So you can see this here. Uh, so maybe I wanna move that uh, YouTube video to before uh, that shout out activity because I want the students to, uh, to watch the video uh, and go through it before they, they answer that. Uh, and the other thing is we talked about kind of taking a page and converting it into an activity. You can do that as part of the edit and creation experience as well. So if you, wanna, if you don't wanna do it on the fly, uh, you can do this as you're preparing the lesson so all you do is edit the activity and then uh, go and convert it and you have the same two choices uh, to convert it into a, a handout activity or a workspace activity. Uh, once you converted it, uh, you see this, uh, this view and of course you want to test play the activity, you can just click on the preview button uh, to test it and see how it works before you actually deliver it to students. Um, so that's uh, a quick uh, overview of the new creation experience. Uh, we are looking to add more um, content and media into uh, what you'll be able to uh, include in your lessons, so look for that in the future. Uh, and the last thing I'm going to end uh, uh, with is actually um, something quite small, but I think you'll enjoy. Uh, so I know a lot of you use uh, Shout It Out as your uh, favorite lab activity in the classroom because you can do uh, really quick uh, student discussions and get feedback from students. So I'm actually going to start a shout out activity here and I'll have uh, my helpers uh, type in responses for their favorite food. So nothing is new about this part of the experience. I'm just going to type in something and send it to my teacher. Okay, so now I have uh, a collection of responses from students. Uh, this is great for in class when you want the, uh, to go over a concept and formatively assess students. But a lot of times you get uh, an overwhelming number of responses from students and you don't have time to look through all of them during the class. Um, so I'm happy to say now that all of these student responses also save as part of the lesson and they save automatically. So as a teacher, if I were to exit the lesson uh, at the end of the day and at a later point uh, decide to go back and see uh, how the class responded that day, I can then open that lesson um, go to that page with the shout out activity, and now you'll see a button called Review Results. When you click on that button, uh, it reloads all of those um, student responses, so then you can go through each one of them and review them uh, at your own time. Uh, and you don't have to sort of make sure that you go through them uh, in classroom. So that's a quick overview of uh, the, new activity, the new features coming in Smart Learning Suite Online. We have a lot more planned for over the summer as well as the fall. Um, so uh, uh, stay up today uh, with our uh, social media channels and look forward to seeing you guys again. Thank you.